Hi, welcome back to Cheyenne Life. This is Debbie. Just wanted to show you my head of spinach that came out of the container garden. This is actually my grandson planted it and he doesn't want to stand still because he's three and a half. But look at that beautiful head of spinach. And we're going to go ahead and plant some more because it most likely will be ready and available by the time fall comes around and he is wanting to pass it off. Anyway, that is the beautiful head of spinach. Can you say it again, bud? It's my spinach. <laughs> and there you have it. That is my grandson. And he said, that is his spinach. So dinner tonight is going to consist of artichokes, some baked acorn squash, and a big slab of some salmon with dill sauce. And of course, my daughter isn't going to eat it because she hates fish. So I'm going to have to fix her something else, I guess. I just wanted to comment about my fuchsia plants right now. This fuchsia is absolutely full of blooms and buds all over it. Is anyone else's fuchsia like this right now? And I've got an older fuchsia and it's only bloomed a few times so far. But this one is a different color and it is just covered in blooms and uh, just gorgeous. So this is not really a full garden tour. I'm sorry about that. That strap keeps falling down. I have a strap on my phone. Um, and that's just to keep me from losing it. Anyway, this is not a full garden tour, but I just wanted to show everyone how much progress has been going on in the garden and growth over the past several days. It is just amazing. And this area right here that is bare at the moment is some spinach that I had um, reseeded recently. This is not the spinach that I just showed you. Um, that was in a container. This is a separate spinach bed and I just replanted it and they should be coming up probably in the next day or two. And back there was some mescaline and I went ahead and harvested that just a few minutes ago along with that spinach and have replaced all the seeds in there so those will be coming up in the next three days and that was such a beautiful strand of, of lettuce right there I just went ahead and left it I want to see what it does so I'm just gonna leave it in there and uh, I have all of my carrots that are up that I had reseeded in the spots that are bare in my carrot bed those are all up and starting to get their second and third leaves so looking forward to those catching up and then I have my radish beds where I had sown my new radishes that I had told everyone about and those are all coming up right now this is going to be the cherry giant and um, oh I think it's giant crimson are in here crimson giant um, is in this bed as well as the French breakfast over there and they are beginning to head up in fact I just ate one a second ago absolutely delicious I'm kind of becoming like Roots and Refuge. I just go out in the garden and pick something and, and eat it. Anyway, I um, wanted to show everyone my beets. I do not have a whole lot of luck with beets and or garlic. And true to form, my beets looked absolutely fantastic until just recently. And if you look in there, a lot of the leaves on my beets just seem to be dying off. And I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. And I mean, I have beets in other places and those beets are absolutely beautiful. Um, you can see some of the beets there in between my broccoli plants. And then I have the new beets in here. And again, the compost that I used in here was mushroom compost as well as black cow compost. And also I mixed it with a um, garden soil and also a... Um, potting soil mix so there's a whole lot of mixtures of stuff in here as well as I fertilize with Job's organic so I'm not exactly sure what's going on with the beets I mean they seem to be doing okay other than just having a few leaves dying off and then I have the beets over here along the edges on the other side and they're just beautiful I'm not having any of those issues so is anyone else having that I looked to see if there was pests no pests no snails um, we do not have a whole lot of snails or slugs here. So, um, not real sure what's going on with that. If anyone knows, let me know. Um, leave a comment down below. 
And um, in the meantime, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. I mean, otherwise the beets look okay. Um, not having any problems with them trying to form um, heads or anything like that. They look like they're doing great. And as you can see, the rutabagas are right beside of them. And the rutabagas have zero issues at all. They're just, they're rocking. And um, of course I had to replant these after the hail storm. So they're still trying to catch up and do something. And I'm still probably gonna have to thin some of them out. But they look beautiful. And I am getting heads on my broccoli right now. As you can see, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. And I do have a broccoli head on each one of the plants, except for the ones that I had transplanted and kept, they're catching up and they're actually getting a lot bigger now. So I'm definitely seeing that they are probably going to set heads on them. I'm not sure how big they'll be because they were kind of stunted with being behind and it's shaded, but they are getting bigger. You can see there. And then my collards are right here and they're doing fantastic as well. No issues there. And there's another cabbage but, uh, moth. But, but I do have a dragonfly that is um, prowling in the garden. And he just, he just went by my face right now. And he has been catching the cabbage moths. So I didn't have to do anything about them. The, um, there's only one of the cabbage moths left because the dragonfly has captured the other ones. And I'd seen three in total. So he got um, two of them at least. So everything else looking fantastic. As you can see, all of my zucchini are starting to spread out now. They have blooms on them. They're beginning to set some zucchini on them. And at this point, I'm not even sure what mixtures that I have. That is a military helicopter going over because we're close to the air base. Very low. I can actually see the guys sitting outside of the door. They're just sitting on the edges. So that was pretty neat. Anyway, the zucchini, they're doing fantastic. They're setting some zucchini on them. I've got the Genovese in here and I have the gray zucchini, dark green zucchini, and cocazelle. At this point, I don't know who is who and I don't care. <laughs> um, I know that they're half a row of each of those. So um, there should be three plants each, except for one row, which has four each. So um, I have eight in this row, six in this row here. And then I have eight in this row, and this row has the white acorn squash and the uh, dark green zucchini in here. So looking absolutely fantastic. And the sunflowers are looking great. I planted more fennel along my pepper plants, and it's all up right now. And uh, my daughter just mentioned that the fennel is looking great. And I said, yeah, it's because uh, I planted some more also. And the beans are all the way up to the top already of the trellis that I made. And they're starting to bend and uh, go along the trellis. So they're doing what I expected that they would do without me even having to do a whole lot of anything. Um, except for hoe them a couple times. I pulled the dirt up along the uh, sides of the beans, of course and as well as I do my potatoes. Um, that is one of the things that uh, I hear a lot of people, they don't understand why they're not seeing a lot of progress on their beans or their potatoes. And I'll see sometimes in some videos that the potatoes will be really, really skinny, um, not a whole lot of, of uh, foliage with them. And that's one of the things that you have to do with beans and with potatoes and corn is you need to hoe them. And I actually hoe every vegetable in my garden, including the peppers, including the tomatoes, all of them. Um, and I, we call it hilling back in Tennessee. Um, hoeing or hilling, either one. You're just basically pulling the dirt up around the base of the roots on the plants um, as far up as you can, usually to the bottom tier of leaves, which I don't do with the tomatoes because the tomatoes I trim. But um, that is one of the things you need to do, and I do it with my squash as well, is just make sure that you don't have any of that base stem sticking um, so far out of the dirt because it actually is a stable method to do 
is to pull more dirt up around it. It stabilizes them from wind damage and gives them more nutrients and they don't have to work as hard at getting those nutrients out of the ground. So hilling, hoeing, do it if you can. And uh, definitely do it if you want to have any, any amount of produce. My tomatoes are looking fantastic. Um, definitely have tomatoes on all of the plants now. Um, even some of the smaller ones that had gotten broken and are still catching up. Um, it was funny because I got tomatoes on the shortest one of my super sauce tomato plants first before the other ones, which was just hilarious to me. Um, the black creme tomatoes are still trying to catch up. Um, I haven't seen any fruit on them as yet, but as you can see, that is one of the black creme tomatoes right there between my tomatillos. And it is getting much, much bigger. And you can see some of the tomatoes hanging from the super sauce tomato behind it. And then here I have another black creme tomato that is just getting massive in size. And um, this one as well, which had gotten broken off. And I mean, there was three out of the four remaining black creme tomatoes were broken from the hailstorm and had to come back out. So they're really misshapen um, because of the hailstorm broke the center stalks on them and they had to basically remake center stalks themselves. And um, I've just basically tied them up, tried to center those um, makeshift, uh, basically let a sucker come on and make a new center um, stalk of the tomato. So I've had to tie those up, try to get them kind of wrangled into being the center stalk um, because you really want them to take off and not be so stubby. Otherwise it kind of stunts the amount of produce that you get off of them. And uh, anyway, I have tomatoes on all of the tomato plants except for the black creme tomatoes so far. Um, and the super beef do not have any tomatoes as yet, but the plants are just getting absolutely massive. Um, so I thoroughly expect the super beef tomatoes to spill out of the towers because I only have um, three foot towers or cages and um, I only had like a few of the four foot cages and I put those around the super sauce until I ran out um, and I couldn't find any more of the four foot cages. I could only find the three foot cages. So anyway, they look great otherwise and I'll just keep staking them up and tying them and all the things that I can do. The cucumbers are really taking off now. Um, you've seen in the past couple of videos that they have started putting runners and taking off and um, definitely the oldest one has done the most work um, by catching up, but now even the smaller ones are catching up as well, or younger ones. Definitely getting their runners set. I don't think I'm going to end up having a Klondike watermelon this year because that is the Klondike watermelon. I had thought it was in one of the containers, but it was not. That was actually another cucumber. So I've forgotten that I'd put in the Poinsett cucumber, which is the only Poinsett I had in the container, and I put the Klondike watermelon here. And I mean, it's trying to do something, but it's a little bit too late in the season, so I just don't think it's going to do anything. And uh, cucumbers are really taking off, getting the runners set, and I am seeing cucumbers that are on some of the plants, even the short ones. And these beans are really taking off now. These are always the slowest for some reason. Um, but they are definitely taking, even though they got most sun, they've got the most sun over here and they have southern exposure. But the beans that are over there and younger are doing much, much, much better. But uh, these are definitely beginning to take off now. I don't really know if the, the uh, asparagus beans or Asian beans are really going to do anything because they've just basically done that and just stayed there. I haven't seen runners or anything for them and they are supposed to just become these massive plants with all these long noodle-like beans and I'm not really seeing a whole lot of prog progress out of them. So I'm kind of regretting that I planted them. I took a chance um, wondering if they would grow here and I'm not sure that they will but I'll you know I'll let them go to see if they uh, will do anything and I might try to squeeze in some of the Blue Lake Pole plants in this area too, just in case. So at least this area of space is not wasted in case those do not do anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plant some more um, beans in here 
to try to see if they'll catch up to the other ones that they should because those back there just they were massive in no amount of time my red curry squash are just really taking over everything at this point they have set their runners this one is even trying to run up on the trellis which i will not let it do um, as you will see in some of my previous videos i am not a fan of trellising squash because squash has roots at every joint and I just don't want that to happen. But anyway, that is the video right now. Everything is doing fantastic. Corn, potatoes, all of that doing amazing. All of my container gardening is doing great. And we will see you in the next one. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notices on new videos as they come out.